What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to go over how you can create this Streamlit app from scratch. This app takes as input a cryptocurrency symbol over here, so BTC for example. Then you have to input the number of days you want to predict ahead click predict and this app is now going to train a new LSTM model from scratch, evaluate the model, identify the best parameters for the model and then return the predictions on the actuals, on the test data set and also the predictions ahead. It's also going to return the latest close price and also the price after 15 days. Let's try another crypto over here, Ethereum, click predict and see how well it does. Now, as I have explained in the previous video, LSTM is actually a terrible time series model to use on stocks and crypto prediction, just because yes, it does very well on the test data, but it actually does a terrible job on the future data, data that the model has never seen before or data that we don't actually have the X values. However, we have created these videos and the models just for educational purposes, just to show that you should not use these models to make predictions on stocks or crypto. Now, please note that this video is actually video part two. In the first video, we went through all the Python code and what each bit does. And then in this video, we are just going to put all the code together and create the Streamlit app, create and deploy the Streamlit app. So we are not going to be explaining the model per se, as we've done in the previous model. We are just going to be creating the Streamlit app. So if you want to watch the first video first, I'm going to have it in the link in the video description. And before we jump into this video, let me just say that if you're passionate about data analytics and data science, then please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and enable notifications for my future videos. Right, starting with the first thing we need, make sure that you have all these libraries installed in your PC. If you don't have them, then all you have to do is type in pip install and then the name of the library, for example, uh, over here, click run, and this is going to install the libraries you're missing. Right. Next, we run this bit of code over here, so we ignore warnings. We don't want to return any warnings in our Streamlit app at the front end. Next, we are setting the layout to be white, and we are also removing the padding at the top of the page. So the white layout, if I zoom out, is basically using all the page, and then removing the padding on top of the title is removing the empty space we had before over here. Right, going back, uh, we're just going to be this one, zoom in again. What do we have next? We are adding our images. So peak one is going to be our sidebar image, and then peak two is going to be our banner image. So this is peak one, the sidebar, and this is picture two, the banner at the top of the title. Next, we are adding our title, which is basically LSTM forecasting model. And we are also aligning our title to the center. We are giving a marching top of minus 20 pixels. Next, we are adding our sidebar inputs. So first we print the header, which is model parameters. Then we create a text input for our cryptocurrency symbol. And we give it a default value of BTC USD. As you can see, well, if I refresh, you're gonna see the default values. There you go, BTC USD. I'm gonna zoom out again. And then we are also adding the predictions ahead. This is a number input. This is, uh, there we go over here, number input. And the default is 15. And we are also saying if st.sidebar.button predict is clicked. So if somebody clicks this predict, you can see it start running. Then we want to do the following. First, we want to pull our raw data from Yahoo Finance. Then we want to scale our data, min max scaler 0 to 1. Then we want to split our raw data 80% training, 20% test. Then we want to create this function that we have explained in the previous video 
that basically creates the correct input structure for our LSTM model, then we want to run this function on our X train and Y train. This is the function. And then on our X test and Y test, same function. So we can restructure our raw data and feed it into our model. Next, we are reshaping our raw data into samples, time steps, and features because as we have explained in the first video, we need exactly this structure for our model to work. Then we are building our LSTM model. We are going to use a sequential model. We are going to add a first layer of neurons, 50 neurons. Then we're going to add another layer of neurons, which is going to be another 50 neurons. Then we are going to add a dense layer of 25 neurons and then another dense layer, which is our final layer, which is our actual predictions. Then we are going to compile our model. We are going to use an Adam optimizer and also mean square error as our evaluation metrics. And next we are going to feed our model. We are going to run it five times on all of our data. So we get the best predictions and the minimum loss. Then we are going to make predictions on our train and our test data and then store them in these two objects over here. Then we are going to inverse our predictions into actual values just because we have already scaled them between a value of 0 and 1 and now we want to inverse that transformation so we have an actual Bitcoin price for example, 100k, not 0 point something. Next, we want to forecast ahead for the next X number of days we give it. So the prediction ahead is actually this prediction ahead over here. And as we have explained in the previous video, this piece of code over here, it takes the last 60 days, it predicts the next day, and then it adds that to our input again. It makes the next prediction of the next 60 days, not actually the next 60 days, the next 60 values. Then it takes that prediction, it adds it back, and then it moves like this 60 values at a time and a prediction at a time. Um, next, we are inversing our predictions back into an actual number. Next, we are calculating the latest close price and the last predicted price, which is basically these two numbers over here. Next, we are splitting our page into three columns. So we can actually center on column two, these two cards you see over here. If I zoom out, by the way, they look much nicer, but I'm zooming in just to see the code. Next, I'm saying with column two, so in the middle of the Streamlit app, I want to print the latest close price and the last predicted price but I also want to apply this custom CSS style that I'm saying over here. So I want the display to be flat. I want to have a space round. I want the coloring to be this color. I want the padding to be 10 pixels, border radius 10 pixels, align in the center. And what else do I have? Latest close price is the title and then font size 20 pixels and then print the latest close price. Exactly the same with the next card over here. Next, I just want to plot our final plot, which is this plot you see over here. Again, this is a copy paste of the previous video of the code. It's exactly the same. So first we start by setting the figure size. Then we plot the actuals with color blue, which is the blue color you see. Then we plot this AXV line, which is this vertical line you see over here that separates our X train data set with our test data set. Then we are just creating the index for our train and also test data set. And that index is basically the dates that we have used. And then we are plotting our actual predictions, sorry, our train predictions with color green and our test predictions with color orange. So if we test, you can see green and you can see orange over here. Next, we are creating the index, which is basically the dates for our future ahead predictions. 
and we are just plotting them over here using a red color, which is this red color you see on the predictions ahead. Next, we are just adding a title, the X and Y labels, the legend, and then we are creating st.pyplot, so streamly.pyplot to plot this plot we have just defined above. And now that we have all the code of our Streamly app, which was mostly copy paste from the previous video, uh, we want to create a new file, which is going to be a Python file, and then copy and paste this code in that Python file. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to copy all of this up until here, copy, then paste it, rename this as uh, LSTMV2 version 2, uh, to underscore by the way, click rename, file, save all, and now I want to find this file and paste it in the folder location that I have all my other code and my pictures. Just because I'm loading data in, which is pictures, not data, I want it to be on the same location. In my case, it's going to be over here, here, uh, where is it? Users, PC, and then it should be somewhere here. There we go, LSTMV2. So I'm just going to cut this and I'm going to paste it in the file location. I have everything else. You can see in this location, I have pick one and pick two that I need for this code to work. And now I need to open this using Visual Studio Code. Now I already have Visual Studio Code open, but make sure, let me see, this is Arima, uh, this is LSTM. Make sure that you open the whole folder. So select the whole folder. In my case is the LSTM one, select the folder. And if I click over here, LSTM underscore V2, is the app we have just created just now. In order to run this now, you're gonna need to run streamly run. Uh, let me copy the name of the file, uh, streamly run, and then the name of the file dot pi in a new terminal. So if you don't have a terminal down here, you can click run, and then you can create a new command prompt like this, and then paste streamly run uh, lstm underscore dot pi click enter and this is going to open a new tab in your browser there you go you can see it's running there you go we have our app let's test it now with the default values so i'm just clicking run on the default ptc and then 15 days this app actually takes a lot longer than our previous arima forecast just because lstm is a lot heavier there's a lot more calculations but there you go, it works. As you can see, very good job on training data set prediction, very good job on testing, terrible job on predicting ahead. If we test something else, let's do XRP for example, 20 days maybe, let's click predict and let's see how this is going to perform. There you go, you can see very good job on X train, very good job on the test data set, not as good job on the predictions ahead. By the way, I'm just guessing it's not a good job because it's just flat lines, but maybe, maybe it's going to be correct. I don't know that and I highly doubt that. However, I think this is a very good example in terms of educational purposes. So learning how to use LSTM and understanding how it works and also understanding how you can deploy this by creating a Streamlit app. But please do not use this to make any actual trading, just because, as I said, I don't think it's good for predicting ahead. Right, so this is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video. If you feel like you did, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for future videos.